Passover and Jesus, they're not two separate things. Yeshua is the fulfillment of Passover. The Passover has begun, and during the course of the Seder, we will drink from our cups and replenish them a total of four times. Let's all raise together the first cup. With this cup, we commit our servants to the Lord and pray for His blessing upon the rest of the service to follow. It is concerning this first cup that Messiah declared, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. When did Jesus make that statement? Anybody know? The last the night. Night. Yes, the upper, yeah. when he was celebrating Passover right. Right. with right. his disciples. Mm -hmm. He lifted up the Passover wine and he said, I'm not going to be able to drink this with you again Amen. until the kingdom of God has Amen. come. He knew mm -hmm. he was going to the Father and that he wouldn't be able to be with his people again in the form that he was with us on earth until he returned again when we'd be able to touch him once again. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what an awesome thing to realize that Passover and Jesus... They're not two separate things. Yeah. Yeshua is the fulfillment of yeah. Passover. Yeah. You know, Paul told us that Christ has become our Passover. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this question, Brandon. When John the Baptist identified Jesus as the Lamb of God, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, what do you think was in John's mind when he pointed at Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb? The Passover. The Passover. <laughs> but don't most Christians miss that completely? Yes. 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 From the very beginning, John identified him as the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Revelation, Pastor Anita, we find that no one was able to open the scroll. As John is seeing a scroll being opened mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation. And John began to weep but because no one was able to open the scroll. But finally, somebody came forward to open the scroll. Who was that person that came to open the scroll? The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Lamb of God. I mean, Amen. beloved, this is like Jewish roots. <laughs> this is Jewish roots 101. Amen. It really is. Amen. We need to identify Jesus with where he comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is why the first chapter of the New Testament, Matthew 1 1, begins by tracing Jesus' genealogy back to David and back to Abraham. Correct. Matthew begins by saying, this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That's what we're doing today. We'll now say the prayer over the matzah. Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech alam, hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. The story of Passover is a story of deliverance from bondage, and all of the elements of the Passover meal are part of the portrait of redemption. The carpus represents Israel that was young mm. and green, mm. and in the springtime of their nation, they were just about to be delivered out of Egypt and be born. Mm. So the Lord delivered them out of Egypt by all the plagues He poured out upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And when they got to the Red Sea, as the Egyptians were still trying to kill them, pursuing them, what did God do? He did a miracle. He parted the Red Sea, right? And the Israelites were able to walk through to the other side. But what happened in response to that? Egypt tried to follow them, still pursuing them. Yeah. Unfortunately for the Egyptians, when Israel got to the other side, the sea closed in and drowned Egypt in the sea. And so what we do is we look at the dipping of the parsley, which represented Israel, into the salt water that represented the Red Sea. And we say Israel was young and green and in the springtime of their nation. They went into the Red Sea once we dip. But what happened? Egypt tried to follow. Egypt also went into the Red Sea. But what happened when Egypt went into the Red Sea? Bam, hatch. God <laughs> swallowed them up down the throat. Let's take and eat. We'll pass that salt water around. The, the horseradish, the bitter herbs, of course, for Israel in the ancient times, 3,500 years ago, represented the bitter bondage that they were in under Pharaoh and under the yeah. Egyptians. Right. But during this part of the Seder, what we do is we think about where would we have been and what would our lives would have been like if Father wouldn't have come to us and revealed wow. himself to us through the person of his son. 
So what we're going to do right now is we're going to distribute the horseradish and we're going to put it on a piece of matzah and we're going to remember a point in our life where we were lost, afraid, anxious, yes. whatever it looked like before we know Jesus. And we're going to express thanks to him in our heart for where we are today because of him. Amen. It might not be easy right now, yeah. but I'll tell you what, we're a lot better off Amen. than we used to be. Amen. Let's take, beloved, right. of the maror, the bitter herb. Thank you, Jesus. But what is the meaning of the haroset, and why is it sweet to the taste? The haroset is a reminder of the mortar with which the Israelites made bricks for Pharaoh. But why should such a sweet mixture represent such bitter toil? Even the most bitter labor is sweetened by the promise of redemption. Let's once again take a piece of matzah and dip it in the haroset and realize that even though we've had bad times in our life, Father God has used our bad times even for good because he causes all things to work yeah. together for good yeah. to those that love him and are yeah. called according to his purpose in Messiah Jesus. And in fact, oftentimes, the hard times in our life are the foundation for yeah. all the good things Amen. that come. Yeah. So Father, we bless you that you use yeah. even the difficult times in our life yeah. for your glory and your good purposes. Yeah. And what is the meaning of the egg, the Haggigah, and why is it brown? The symbolism and meaning that I like most concerning the Haggigah, or hard by old egg, is the fact that it represents the sacrifices that were offered during Passover when the temple was standing. Mm. Let me ask you this question. How many times does a chicken lay an egg? Anybody? <laughs> At least once a day. Once a day, once a every day. day. And how many times do we sin? Every day. Every, every day. day. So how many times do we need a sacrifice? Every, every day. day. And so the Haggigah becomes the symbol of the sacrifices, but King Yeshua offered himself once and for all, Amen. and because of that, the book of Hebrews says, no other sacrifices Amen. are forever needed. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, King Jesus, for becoming our all-sufficient sacrifice. Amen. And what is the meaning of the Zeroah, the shank of bone of the lamb? Since 70 AD, when the temple was destroyed, no Passover sacrifices have been offered. Mm. So since we can't offer a Passover lamb as a sacrifice, because we have no temple, we have no priesthood, and mm. as a result, no sacrifices can be offered. Again, going back all the way to 70 AD, in lieu of that, what we do is we have a symbol of it. We have the bone of the lamb that represents the Passover lambs that were offered mm -hmm. while the temple was standing. Yeah. Amen. But, but without sacrifices, how can we atone for our sins? For the law declares, it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Does this mean that atonement and redemption are no longer possible? May it never be. The fact is that when Messiah Yeshua died on the cross, the veil that separated in the temple, the holy of holies yes. from the holy place, was broken asunder. Yes. We even have the breaking of the veil recorded in the Talmud. Why yes. was it torn asunder? This place that separated man from God's presence? Because God was showing us that now access has been made once and for all through the one sacrifice of Messiah Yeshua. As a result of his one eternal sacrifice, all the other sacrifices are no longer needed. They were simply types and shadows. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, who offers redemption and atonement for our sins. Amen. Behold the bread of affliction, which our ancestors ate in Egypt. Let all who are hungry come. But what but is what the meaning, meaning of the leaven bread? bread? Throughout the Bible, leaven is frequently employed as a symbol of sin. We are released from the generations of the sin of our first forefather, Adam. And as the leaven and his bread caused the dough to rise so that sin came into all humanity and became puffed up, so too the leaven in bread causes the whole bread to become puffed up. Mm. And unleavened bread, which is the symbol of Messiah Jesus, mm. is without leaven because Jesus had no pride mm. and no sin in him. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened. For even Messiah our Passover is sacrifice for us. During the time of Joseph in the Bible, there was a great famine. So all the sons of Israel moved to Egypt. There, Israel flourished and became a mighty people. However, Pharaoh feared the house of Israel. 
so he enslaved the Israelites, forcing them into cruel physical labor. He also ordered the execution of every Hebrew infant son by drowning them in the Nile River. But God was faithful to his covenant, and he protected the infant Moses. Moses became the leader of the Israelites and was sent to the courts of Pharaoh to deliver the message of the Lord, Let my people go. Pharaoh refused, and so Moses pronounced God's judgment on the land of Egypt with severe plagues. The final plague was the death of every firstborn male. To protect the children of Israel, God made a way for the angel of death to pass over their houses. They were to sacrifice a spotless lamb and apply its blood to the doorway of the household. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Pharaoh defied the Lord and placed his will above the will of God. As a result, he brought destruction upon his house and land. How often do we, like Pharaoh, choose our desires over God's direction? And how often do we, like Pharaoh, bring harm upon ourselves and upon those closest to us? Because we share with Pharaoh the sin of disobedience, and because we regard all people as God's creation, we do not rejoice over the destruction visited upon the Egyptians. If everyone now please lift their glass with me. The point of this part of the liturgy is that we have sin in us just like Egypt had sin in them. And even though we're so thankful that Father God chose us and delivered us, we don't glee in the fact that other people get judged because of their sin. And so at this part of the Seder, we're going to be dipping our finger in the cup of wine, which represents judgment. But it's also called the cup of salvation because it was through these judgments that Israel was finally delivered. And then each time we dip our finger in and throw it into our plate, what it reflects is that our joy has been diminished because someone else had to suffer. Recounting now the plagues that fell upon Egypt that will also fall upon the world during the Great Tribulation. The first judgment that fell upon Egypt was that their rivers turned to blood, the plague of Dom, blood. The second plague that fell upon Egypt was the plague of frogs or Sparte. Thirdly, the plague of lice or Kanim covered the land of ancient Egypt. The fourth plague, the plague of wild beasts, a rove. The fifth plague, the plague of Devir, the cattle plague, how the cattle died in ancient Egypt. The sixth plague, the plague of boils, Shechin, the seventh plague, the plague of hail, giant hailstorms yeah. fell upon Egypt. The eighth plague, the plague of Arba, locust that invaded Egypt. The ninth plague, the plague of Chosech or darkness covered the earth. And finally, the tenth plague, the plague of Makat Bechorot, the slaying of the firstborn. Now we're going to lift our cups together in commemoration of God's judgment and act of salvation. As we say, Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech Alam, Barei Pri Hagafen, as we partake now of the second cup of wine or juice, fruit of the vine. It was at this point in the Seder that Yeshua revealed himself by saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Remember the matzah, it's pierced just like Yeshua's pierced. It has stripes on it, just like Yeshua had stripes because of the lashes for our sin. And it's unleavened because he's sinless. He took that Passover matzah. Remember John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God in his baptism. Right. Jesus is bringing it to fulfillment now with crystal clarity before he goes to the cross, celebrating this last Passover meal with his disciples, saying as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me because this is all about me. It all points to me and is fulfilled in me. So he took that piece of matzah, beloved ones. He broke it. He said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Wow. We'll pass that around. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. And remember I said earlier in the Seder that we're going to drink four cups of juice. And the four cups of juice represent the four expressions of what God does for us as his people. It's taken from the book of Exodus, chapter number 6, verse 6 and 7. Let's read it once again. God is speaking to Moses. He said, Say therefore to the sons of Israel, 
I am the Lord and I will bring you out. That was the first cup that we drank earlier in the Seder tonight. It's the cup of sanctification. God brought us out of the world to himself. I will take you out from under the burden of the Egyptians and I will deliver you. That was the second cup we drank. The cup of deliverance or the cup of judgment because God delivered Israel by pouring out judgments upon the Egyptians. Now we come to the third cup, the cup of redemption. I will also, the Lord said, redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. So it was during this point in the Seder, we believe that Yeshua lifted up the third cup of juice. He said something like, Baruch atad and Ilo, Henu melech alam, Borei pri ha Blessed art thou, Father, Lord of the earth, who brings forth the fruit of the vine, the Passover wine. And he said, this is my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink all of it, for I will not drink it with you again until the coming of the kingdom. Beloved, every time we celebrate Passover, we do it in honor of King Jesus, realizing that Passover is all about him. He is the Passover lamb that takes away the sin of the world, and he's coming back, beloved, to be revealed as the reigning king of the (laughs) Father. Take and drink. Thank you for redemption, Father. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. And now it's time to drink from the fourth cup, the cup of praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Borei pri hagafen. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Now you'll notice we have a seating at the table where no one is placed. Mm. Who is that empty seat for? Elijah. It's for Elijah. Again, beloved ones, all over the world when we celebrate Passover, we have an empty spot set for Elijah. Mm. Why? So as Jewish people celebrate Passover, they don't just remember how God delivered them in the past through Moses 3,500 years ago, but they're looking forward with anticipation to Messiah's coming. But why Elijah? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Malachi that before Messiah comes, Elijah will come first and announce his coming. We know the Messiah has come. The Jewish community is still looking for him to come, Mm -hmm. whereas we know that he already has come. In fact, when Yeshua walked upon the earth, some religious Jewish leaders came to Jesus and they said, if you're the Messiah, where is Elijah? For we have read that Elijah will come first to announce his coming. You know what Yeshua said? He has come. He has come. Yeshua said in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 14, John the Baptist was he, if you can receive it. That's right. Well, beloved ones, as we celebrated Passover together, I believe that we've all been touched with the warmth of the Holy Spirit to be able to be united to him and united to each other. Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name of the Lord. And we close the Seder by saying next year in Yerushalayim, In other words, may we celebrate the Seder again together next year in Yerushalayim, the city of the great king. And we know that when Jesus returns, he's going to return as the lion from the tribe of Judah and as the offspring of David. And he's going to take all of us together to the heavenly city, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. So all I can say, beloved, is what Jesus said. He said, salvation is from the Jews. Jews. Yes. Baruch Hashem, I love you. God bless you. And Hak Sameach, happy Passover. Hak Sameach.